Hi everybody, welcome back to another C++ tutorial. Today we're going to be finishing up the discussion of containers in the STL uh, with the last container which does allow for efficient insertion and removal of elements anywhere in the container. So it's not like vectors or decks where it's only good at uh, removing or inserting elements at the end or at the front. This is um, this container which is called the list is good at uh, inserting and removing elements anywhere uh, in the whole sequence. So let me show you the diagram of how it works. As you can see, uh, this is how it's laid out, so it looks quite a bit different from uh, vectors or decks. You have a pointer to the first element and a pointer to the last element, and then um, all of the elements are actually contained in what are called nodes. So these little white boxes are nodes. And so each node contains the element itself and then two pointers, one that points to the element before it and one pointer that points to the element or sorry the node the node before it and one pointer that points to the node after it. So what this means is that if you were going to add another element say in between uh, this one and two so this would be a list of integers as you can see so this node holds one this node holds two so if you were going to add another integer here in between um, all that the list has to do is cook up a new node that has uh, the number 50 inside of it and then um, make a couple pointers one that points to this node one that points to this node and then it has to change this pointer and change this pointer and then you're good to go so all that the list has to do to put in a new element is make a new node and mess with pointers a little bit you can contrast this with what you had to do if you were working with a vector or something if you put a new element in the middle of a vector it has to copy every element of the vector over to a new spot and also reallocate a whole new array for the uh, you know for the new size so as you can see lists are much more efficient at doing this and it's the same story if you're going to remove one of these elements all you have to do is you know delete the actual node and then mess with the pointers a little bit to fix everything and it's all working again and the, it's, it's also true if you do this at the start or the end so it's efficient to insert or remove elements anywhere in a list. The drawback of a list uh, that comes from this setup is that there, there is no way to go straight to um, a certain element. So this list is only drawn with three elements, but you can imagine one that had, say, ten elements. If you wanted to get to the, the sixth element, what you would have to do is start at the start, or you could start at the end, I guess that would be more efficient, but it's the same process. So start at the start, so ride this pointer to the, to the first element, then you have to ride the next pointer to the next element, ride that node's next pointer to the next node, and continue to ride the next pointers until you arrive at the sixth element, and then there you are. But that is what's necessary for what's called iterating through the list that is going um, you know, going through element by element. But that's also what's true if you just want to um, access a particular element in the list. So this may not sound like such a big drawback, but the way that lists are implemented really reflects this sort of design, and it makes them um, much harder to work with than vectors or decks, and it's not at all intuitive as it might be for vectors and decks. So let me show you how you how you go about this and just how difficult it can be in my opinion. Um, the way you make a list is the same way that you do for vectors and decks. You just list with integers and you can call it my list. So you gotta have again it's a it's a um, template class so you can doesn't have to just be integers. And so we could initialize it with five zeros like we could with vectors and decks. That's all fine and good. But here we'll run into um, a difficulty with lists. So suppose you wanted to change this third element to a 10. Okay, Sounds like a pretty small request for a vector or a deck. All you would do is my list um, 2 equals 10. Boom, there you go, you're done. No, that does not work for lists because with lists you cannot just go straight to the second index or the third element. So you have to go through a whole process and here's how you do it. 
type in the name of your list not the name of your list but the name of the type of your list with the template use the scope operator and then type iterator so this is a uh, it's a class so you're making a variable here and uh, its its name or sorry its type is an iterator for um, the integer list and so don't get too hung up on that I mean it's mo more more important how you use the iterator than actually what it is in this case so the thing about iterators with lists is they're not the same as the iterators that I mentioned when we were talking about vectors iterators with vectors are random access iterators that is to say that you can take this iterator and you could add two to it and bam there you go now you would be at the third element no you cannot do that with list iterators because that's not how lists are set up with list iterators they're called bidirectional which means that you can you can add to them you can increment them or you can decrement them and that's about it you can't just add two you can't just add ten you have to increment it ten times um, and there's a slightly better way to do it than actually typing it out but so one option for getting to the third element is to increment your iterator sorry you have to start the iterator at mylist.begin so it has a starting point and then increment the iterator twice to get it out to the third element and so that's not too much work if you're only going for the third element but say you were going for you know the the sixteenth element or the fiftieth element you you don't want to have to type this out fifty times so there is a, a function in the STL for lists or for list iterators called um, let's see advance so you you type advance IT comma how many times you want to advance it in this case two so this is basically your index and so if it was um, if you were going for the 50th element it would be 49 but in this case two so that advances your iterator two steps forward and then to change what that iterator refers to you use the dereference operator so remember this is usually used for pointers so you dereference your iterator and set that equal to 10 and that's how you do it now you're gonna have 0 0 10 0 0 and so this is really quite a process if you're going to be um, doing this every time you want to change one element of the list and in my opinion it's a little bit misleading that they make you use the dereference operator here because it makes you feel like iterators are pointers and they're not the same as pointers iterators are are different um, and so that's one of my criticisms of the of the list container um, or at least the way it's set up here but in any case this is what you have to do if you're going to change one um, one number in the list so already it's a little bit more of, of a pain to work with but you know it's definitely going to be worth it if you're going to be inserting and removing elements you know anywhere throughout the list and you're going to need that um, extra performance to be able to do that at a good um, efficiently that is to say so you see the same sort of thing if you're going to do a for loop um, to output a list it's it's the same kind of protracted drawn out process so we have to make um, an iterator and this does not actually have to be a new iterator you could just reuse this since we're done with it but I'll just make a new one to make it distinct so I'll call it output IT and um, I'm gonna set it equal to my list dot begin and actually I suppose we can do that in the for loop so remember the first condition is what you're initializing with I mean it's been so long since we've done a for loop that's not just int i equals zero you know you have to sort of be careful here you don't want to be this is output it you don't want to say output it is less than my list dot size that doesn't make sense because output ID, it is not a number it's an iterator so you have to do output it does not equal my list dot end and then you can do output it plus plus and it will get incremented um, every cycle or every iteration of the for loop so now you can come in here and see out the dereference of the IT iterator and that should do it that should give you an output of the list so let's give this a compile and I'm sorry I didn't mean to dereference IT I meant to dereference output IT so let's give this a try sorry list 
and it got another one of these autocorrect things. I should find out how to fix that. But okay, there you go. So now the array is 0, 0, 10, 0, 0. But as you can see, it's just, I mean, it's a little bit more work to work with a list than it was to work with a vector or a deck. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're trying to decide um, how you want to, you know, what you want to do with the list. And, I mean, even the, the best feature of a list, which is the fact that you can insert and remove elements anywhere in the list, is somewhat held back by this because you have to go through... I mean, okay, let's let's take a step back here. It's not... The list design is not held back by what you have to do in order to accomplish something. You could, if you wanted to, make your own function, which is going to, uh, you know, replace the ith index of a list with um, a new, a new, uh, a new value. You could make a function to do that. It's just a little bit roundabout to do it in the middle of the code. So, I mean, yeah, it can be frustrating, but there are ways around it. So don't let me completely deter you from using lists. I mean, there are a lot of really great applications for um, lists. And by the way, these are called double linked lists while I'm talking about it. So if you encounter this sort of thing outside of C++, it would be under the heading of double linked list. And so um, you can think about it. That name comes from you have this node is linked to the next element and also linked to the first element. If you had like a single linked list, that would be where this only had one pointer, which pointed to the next element, and you couldn't go backwards. But for uh, the list object, it's double linked. So anyway, let me show you how you can insert an element, and um, that'll be it. So let's make a new iterator, insert it, I'll start this again at mylist.begin, I'll advance it to Oh, I don't know. So now we're, we're like this. Let's insert an element in between these two. Um, so that would be... Um, its new position is going to be at the third index. So you do have to be a little bit careful. So this, um, this iterator refers to this element right now, and when we insert it, it's going to insert it before that element. Um, but in this case, that's what we want, so it's all good. Now you just call mylist.insert and I think the syntax is like this with insert with your iterator first and then your new value second and now I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it again down here get rid of the initialization and again like I said you could um, simplify this whole process if you write a few functions to uh, make working with lists an easier task so, I'm sorry, I should have put a line in between these or something. Okay, sorry, it just outputted two arrays right on top of each other, two lists. Okay, so now you see we have what we did before with uh, changing one value to 10, and now it's quite simple to just throw in an element there. So I guess once you get used to working with iterators and it's not hard to think about anymore, um, and you know exactly what's going on, it's, it's no real problem. And like I said, if you make a few of your own uh, functions, you could make this whole process easy. And it's the same thing for uh, deleting elements. So if I was going to, um, let's just say I was going to erase the fourth element instead of making it a new, a new element, it's just erase that iterator, and there you go. It just popped off that zero. So no real problem. Erasing and inserting is fairly easy once you're used to using iterators. So here's my conclusion to conclude this discussion about um, containers in the STL. You've seen the three different types and you may see a list and think, wow, it has everything I want. It can insert and remove elements anywhere and as long as I'm willing to do a little bit of fuss with iterators, I can do everything else. So I can assign values like this and output the array with a for loop and all of that. And so you you might be tempted to, okay, I'll forget about vectors and decks because lists can do everything that they can do and in some cases even better. But you have to remember that there are times when using vectors or decks is a more efficient use of, of the computer's resources. Um, iterating through a list like this takes more time. If this list had, say, a thousand elements, you might start to notice a bump 
in performance if you're using a list versus using a vector. Now, if you're going to be inserting and removing elements right in the middle of that thousand, um, thousand element container, a list would be a better option. But if all you're doing is working with that last element, then there's no reason to use a list and a vector would be a, a much better choice. So part of being a programmer is figuring out when to use uh, different functionality for different situations. So you have to analyze what you actually are asking the computer to do and figure out what the easiest way and most efficient way uh, to accomplish that task is. So that is all I have to say about lists. Um, there are some other things that you can do with lists and vectors and decks, so if you just Google it, you'll find a few resources that um, will give you the syntax for doing that, but mostly I wanted to make sure you understand the, the differences between them and why you might use one over the other. So thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope it's helped you understand lists and um, you've learned a bit about uh, STL containers in the last few videos. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.